Yeah. Welcome to our lesson on government failures. So, most by now, at this point in the course, uh, we've learned about market failures. So there are times that markets markets get the prices wrong. Um, and markets, there are things markets can't do well. And two of the biggest things we saw with, were with externalities, so the side effects. So say a plant is producing pollution. Uh, or kind of on a more personal level for most college students, somebody comes back to their dorm room at three in the morning and decides to play loud music, right? There's a cost imposed on other people that's not involved in the, that's not captured by those who are making the transaction themselves. Uh, and this, those are market failure. So with market failures, the correct government action can fix things, can make, make the outcomes better. Uh, the key words there, though, are the correct government actions. We know governments can screw up and can screw up royally. So on the screen here, there's a couple pictures of uh, there's one of the Capitol and one of the inside the Capitol with Congress. But the um, perfectly well-intentioned people can screw up greatly. Uh, but throughout history, the worst atrocities ever committed been committed by government. Right? Government can screw things up terribly. Um, when there are times where they intentionally do things that are going to cost uh, cost people their lives, cost, you know, make terrible decisions that'll cost people liberty, cost people their lives. And there are times they'll unintentionally do this. So there are times where people who are can, it's just the way things are set up. They're not attempting to do anything terrible to society. It's just kind of the way things were set up. So this section looks at that issue. So uh, before we correct for a market failure, we need to understand the government failure and when when should we think about using the government knowing they well can screw things up terribly in order to correct a market failure so the first thing first note on this government actions aren't costless so just because you have a market failure it doesn't mean you necessarily should automatically correct it right because getting the government involved is going to cost money, right? It's going to require spending on bureaucrats to administer something. Uh, in order to do it as well, the government has to get it right. Uh, perhaps you have an externality. In order to fix it, the government's got to know exactly the right thing to do, and they may not always have that right information. Uh, could actually make things worse, on top of the fact that it is expensive to administer a government program. On top of that, there are issues with governments having so much power that they abuse them. There's many cases documented of the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S., with gross abuse of power, uh, horrendous abuse of power. The picture on the screen is of the case of the Sacketts. Uh, they had, the EPA attempted to seize their land because they were building a house on a wetlands. The picture on the screen is the wetlands they were saying. I mean, this is just a case where these bureaucrats had so much power and abused it. Thankfully, Supreme Court did overrule that. Um, not so thankfully. I don't think there was any actual punishment for the EPA officials um, in terms of jail time or anything like that, um, which there probably should have been as abuse of government power. But um, the governments can abuse their power. Uh, governments can get the prices wrong, and even if they get the prices right and aren't abusing their power, it's not cheap. So it's a key thing we have to know. And that leads us into this section, which we call public choice theory. It's what economists call public choice theory. So that involves analyzing the government's decision-making process. Right? We've spent a lot of the course now analyzing the private sector's decision-making process, and we assume people act to maximize their well-being, whatever that constitutes. Sometimes it's their own internal well-being, sometimes others, um, some, your well-being might be affected by the fact that you'd like to see others well off as well, right? Idea behind public choice theory, politicians seek to maximize their well-being. And it's defined, their well-being is defined as the chances of being re-elected, not their well-being being promote the best interests of society. Is that a little harsh? That might be in some cases, but there's certainly a lot of truth to that. Uh, 
you know, why is it that it's always the f people, the senators and Congress people from the big corn producing states that are the ones who are most pushing for ethanol subsidies, which, you know, involves corn and that's the gasoline uh, additive. Um, is it that it's just magic that these are the people who most think ethanol is best? Or is there some self-interest here that they realize, ah, I've got to promote this because this is the way I get reelected? Uh, I suspect there's a lot of the latter going on there. And economists suspect there's a lot of the latter going on there. And that's one isolated issue. But there's hundreds of cases where you could look at this where politicians would take an action, not necessarily to promote the best interests of society, but to help their chances of being reelected. Because of that, the public sector, just like we covered market failures, the public sector could also have failures. The public sector could have government failures.